All right, here we are, back at our uh, Bob's Barn Workshop here, uh, working on this mini bike engine mount. Unfortunately, I jumped the gun and wasn't thinking, and all I did is I put the chain back on the back tire. I mounted the tire up how it should be, and ran the chain up to the clutch, and I slid the engine around and looked at it and eyeballed it until the chain looked like it was going on all the sprockets correctly. And then I went with a pencil, and I started the drill already. Marked with a pencil down, I had to cut the, the, the pencil about two inches long, so I could reach in there and reach down through the bolt holes on each end, and I marked where they needed to be drilled. So, that's what I'm in the process of doing right now. Uh, I hope I didn't smash my good bit. That was brilliant work. I know you haven't seen anything like that before. Hit it with a little I don't have any cutting oil, so I just hit it with a penetrating oil. Because I've got a little bit of a relief anyway. That's a nice thick plate. She won't be giving out on me again. That back hole I'm going to drill back there, I'm definitely not going to, I'm going to move the center block obviously. I'm going to make these holes large enough that I can twist the engine a little bit. The bolts are metric. I think they're about eight millimeter. So I'll give them a three eighths holes. Run your drill slow. Don't run on high speed. Or you'll burn it up. You'll burn your bit up. This guy tipped over here just a little bit. <sighs> all right, well, I'm not going to show you drill these holes. I'll be back when I drill the 3 8 holes out. All right, well, I got one of the, uh, the supplied engine bolts here. And it measures 0 0.309. I figured I'm at about 350, which is 11 30 seconds here. That's the size I'm going for. Give it just a little, give it 30 thousandths of play. If I don't like that, I can always enlarge it. I don't think that's going to hurt anything to have a little bit of play in the system. Alrighty. I'm going to put my bits back where they came from on this bit. I got a sharpening thing called the drill doctor. I guess I got to doctor my drills. All right. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. Problem being is it's gonna grab when it goes through the bottom. How the hell did I do that? 
Oh my god. Why me? Uh Unbelievable. Somehow it broke the tip off the lubricant spray and then it was continuing to spray all over the floor. We have to find that. Oh my gosh. I'm going to speed the bit up just a little bit. Reduce the clutch, put it on the screw mode I guess, oh yeah, okay, there we go, then I can keep it from biting, see how that works. I'm going to slow this down. I'm going to burn the bit. Uh, gee, I wish I hadn't ruined my stinking lubricant. Be, huh? All right, well, I'm not going to make you watch these. Well, there's the WD-40 behind you. Now, here's an old-timer trick. I got those whole holes blown through, but there's burrs on the bottom, so I'm taking a really large drill bit. I don't have a chance for that, babe. And I'm deburring these bolt holes so my nuts, my washers and nuts will fit flush on the other side. That's just an old timer's trick if you don't have a reamer or a chamfer tool. Now I'm not going to put the engine on this tonight. I'm going to paint it. So I got to clean this all up and clean, paint the frame first. Alright guys, let me do some cleaning. I'm just going to wipe it down with a lacquer thinner and paper towels. I'm just going to start cleaning this with uh, Actually, uh, Windex all-purpose cleaner here just to get all that oil I sprayed all over it. Knock down a little bit. Then we'll go for the lacquer thinner. Man, it looks like that. Lubricants were cutting up paint a little bit, huh? The lacquer thinner will also do the same thing. Lacquer thinner will actually remove dry paint. But it's sticky there in the middle. Alright. Get the lacquer thinner. Well, this should be pretty simple.
to the same lacquer thinner that I used to mount my uh, tractor tires the day before yesterday. If you saw that video, if you didn't, it's pretty fun for some of us. I'll show you how to pop those beads right here on my workbench. Yeah, that's taking that cheap black paint right off. That's all right. That'll that'll give a nice uh, nice uh, fresh, clean surface for the new paint to bite to. I'm gonna cut off these. I think you're gonna do the forks and everything. Start out with the OD green. Steering head. Back here where the engine, there's old engine oil on here. I like lacquer thinner because for one thing it cuts anything. And it will get that oil off. Oil and grease. All that crap. Very effectively. Probably we'll go over it with a rag after this. This is just to get the grease off. And ow, I just hit my knuckles on that stupid sprocket, which felt great. So I'm going to continue wiping this thing down a little longer. And then we'll go for the first coat of uh, OD green, forest green, or smunter green, or whatever it is I bought. I'm going to take this back wheel back off. Alright guys, we're going to put it to sleep for a while. Then maybe we'll do some painting later. I don't know. It's getting a little late in the afternoon here. It's Monday. Tilt this baby up a little bit. Wipe underneath. I don't really care if it's OD green underneath. Do I? Got to pull this wheel off, as I said. All right, I'm going to keep this up for a little while. So, as Arnold Schwarzenegger once said, "I'll be back." I'm actually going to have to remove. Uh, I'm going to take the handle grips and uh, cables all off this too. Let me get right in front of you here. That's the kill switch. Let's see what I got. Of course I got all my good I need to go On a short cord, that's your problem. Yeah, those are just little, little itty bitties here. I know how that comes. I got a new brake handle anyway, so I'm getting rid of that crappy broken one for a crappy new one. Paint the hell bars and everything, so I'm gonna to have to scuff up them uh, the, uh, chrome plating on these too. Now that goes on with a knit. Knits. Just have to have my little metal set right here. 
That looks about like an eight to me. Bingo. All right. I don't think I'm going to try to take this grip off. It's probably glued or cemented on there good. So I'm just going to take these all the way off. See this little, the end of this grip is ripped off and there's dirt in the handlebar, so somebody had fun with this before I did. I think that's all the way out now. I'm going to reuse the cable though, I just bought a grip, so I just got to take this. What do you say? Get a grip? Get a grip, Bob! adjuster all the way out. They back the adjuster all the way out and see how there's a T-slot hole. You turn the cable sideways and then that barrel comes right out I hope. Eventually I keep working on it. Uh, it looks like that it's been pinched a little bit. Maybe I need to twist the screwdriver in there a little bit. Uh, force that apart a little bit. Yep, that's all it needed. That's just cheap aluminum. So there, see you got your barrel nut on the end here. And the new one came with a, a new set of these too, so we'll get rid of these. We'll just set these aside anyway. Alright, that fun is over. Let's finish taking the wiring cables off. Bada boom, I got a card over here that I'm putting everything on. It comes up so that I don't lose nothing. Alright. You know, crappy omatic grip. I'll see if the clamp screws maybe I don't know. We'll see. I gotta find my grip now, it's probably still in the house, so. Alright, well I'm not gonna do much more but wipe this thing down so you're not missing any fun. I think I have to take the uh, handlebars entirely all the way off though. And it looks like they've got Allen heads. I do have some Allen head. Uh, oops, shoot. I do have some Allen heads. I just unplugged it because you're charging. All right, I'm going to pause you while I let you charge. Alrighty workshop fans, here we are back on the mini bike project. Been a couple days, I took a little break, I had things to do. Um, I got a couple things. I was going to take off the handlebars, I had to go find my uh, my metric Allen wrench set because of course nothing I have in the shop out here fits. But another problem I have is, you notice these foot pegs? They kind of slant downward which indicates to me that the end of the shaft in here uh, is worn or bent a little bit, both sides. The fix? Well, I was thinking maybe I'd just uh, hit some weld in the bottom of the opening on both sides and then we'll keep test fitting until we get them to set level. We'll just keep grinding it a little bit with the grinder to bring it back down. So I'm going to do that. But, uh, I'm going to have to disassemble these bars, too. To, uh, I just want to do it right. Let's see. That looks like the big one right there. Before I left the shop the other day, I hit these guys with WD-40 as close as I could get them in there. And in the cracks and in and around the head and everything, so... Um, yeah, they're coming right out pretty good. And they're, they're tight. They must have painter plating or something down in there. Alright, they all cracked. 
case of the droopies now. <laughs> I'm going to scuff these all up because they're going to get painted. I've been reviewing my uh, different techniques on spray painting camo, which I'm going to do on these fenders. Doop. I see where it went, right over by the door. I'm going to do it on the fenders. I'm probably going to do it on parts of the engine covers. Now you start out with a base coat and then you hit what I do. It's pretty simple. You paint big blotches of like green, brown, black. Then you lay your first layer of stencils on there which can be uh, twigs and branches of all sorts, leaves, and then you spray and it leaves the silhouette of that particular leaf or item behind. Then you lay some more twigs over after that's done in a different direction and you spray another layer around those and so on and so forth until you get a very nice 3D effect. And it looks really cool. I did it on some hunting rifles. I'm trying to decide whether I want to pull this axle apart. I'm thinking there's bearings and everything in there. I don't really think I need to. I'm just going to mask off, mask off uh, the shocks here. Clean this up good. I think I'm going to just start the whole frame with OD green. I'll just be careful and not hit the tire. I'll lay a rag or something over it. And then uh, let that dry and then I'll do the wheels. Hey, if they get a little paint on them, that'll be camo anyway. All right, well, I'm going to wipe this up a little bit, and maybe we'll start spraying that a little bit. Well, I'm going to scuff these metal parts up. I got the chain guard and the handlebars that need to be scuffed up that are chrome. So here I've just got some nice uh, abrasive paper, I'll tell you the truth. I don't even know what it is, but it's, it's probably fine. It might be like 150. But you can see that it's deglossing this chrome pretty well. I think it's a quality item, the paper that is. So we'll just scuff this whole thing up. You can see that it's, if you look at it there, I didn't do it out here. You can see it's got like a, sand, a satin finish, which, uh, indicates to me that it's got scratches in it which will allow the paint to adhere and uh, I'm not sure exactly what color I'm going to do these. I might do these brown, dark brown. I've got lighter beige but I don't want it to be too light either. This thing is going to be sitting in the woods in the fall so we're going to have lots of browns and and kind of black and gray because of the fallen leaves of course tree trunks are mostly gray, you think they're brown but they're gray gray and black Actually, um, Rustoleum does make a camo paint kit, which I did not buy. I couldn't find it at my local Home Depot. So I ended up with a different brand of, uh, I think it's the uh, Rustoleum 2X that I got. Let me go get that chain guard and do that one too. Alright, we're back at the shop here. Uh, I got the chain guard, which I do want to put back on. Uh, I think it serves a purpose. Keeps you from getting wound up in the chain. Um, so on and so forth. 
I just need to make a bracket, I think. If you remember the splash shields that I put in here, this will be positioned in here. So if I just take a tab and come out, I'll heat it and twist it, or maybe I'll just weld it straight, and all the fender will be in there. I'll put it in front of the fender. It'll be the last thing I do here while I see what I got anyway. So that'll be in there somewhere. I could probably just, uh, I, it actually touches the fender. I could just put a little tab between the fender and the chain guard because that just will keep that from flopping. Yeah, the chrome on this isn't all that good anyway. But you don't want this big shiny thing out there in the woods. Those uh, deer and turkeys and whatever didn't get to be old deer and turkeys from being stupid. So, we do our best to fool them anyway, don't we? I think this will work fine. You know, the other trick is, is just getting it good and clean and grease free. That will help your paint stick. I can see lots of swirls in this, so this is working all right. Of course, my buddy lacquer thinner helps you install tires too, doesn't it? If you saw that video, if you haven't seen the uh, the tractor, lawn tractor tire replacement video, it's uh, a little long, but there's some interesting fun things in that. And uh, if you don't mind to like and share, share me with your family and friends and the other Facebook people, so that, uh, or the YouTube people, I mean. Make me famous in my own time. We're going to take that bolt out of there. It seems to be buggered up. Phew! I guess I don't need this sweatshirt on because it's doing exactly that. Somebody made a bracket before but it's a peak from the vibration. Or they knocked it off. This uh, bike has had a few bumps and bruises, that's for sure. Looks like the handlebars were bent and straightened back out. I'm going to spray paint the inside of this too, probably just flat black. I got some really old crappy stuff I'll just whack on here. All right, let's pause for a minute. We'll clean this up with some stuff. All right, just got a little lacquer thinner on a, on a rag here. I'm gonna wipe this puppy down. The other beauty of lacquer thinner is, is it dries almost instantly. What I'm gonna do, I just thought about, I probably should tape off this grip area a little bit. I don't want anything underneath the grip. Well, through the magic of lacquer thinner, I'm sure this is dry. Let's see what beautiful colors I got there. I got black, I've got sage green, I have got chocolate brown, uh, tan, and OD green. I'm going for chocolate brown, as I said. I think I'm gonna open the door here. Get my lighter ride.
a little cold and damp today, but it's warm in here, so that's going to be playable. We'll bring it back in and make sure it stays warm. Sorry you guys are seeing me shake this up, but this is real time stuff, guys. Real time. See how well she likes the stick. This is satin finish. So, I'm not be glossy. And I think it dries real fast. But it looks like one coat cover to find. See how well it likes being on chrome plating anyway. That's a woodsy color, ain't it? Isn't it? Sorry. Oh, you that great? Yeah, that's great. I think I'm going to paint the wheels this color. Uh, maybe the, the lower struts. You know, we'll just piece it up with different colors. Combo it up a little bit. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna stand this up somewhere. What do you think? Same treatment on the uh, chain guard, match the chrome, you know. Do this like we thought we knew what we were doing, a little more lacquer thinner. I did already spray the inside of it, but as I said, that's just to dull it up. Nobody's gonna see the, the inside anyway. Gonna be between the wheel and the and the chain and all that. Nobody will ever see it. This I'll probably have to hold on a string or a wire. Let me figure out how to do that. All right, we found a piece of wire to hang this dog on, and we spray paint. Long flowing strokes. I see these guys spritz, 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 and it looks like, what are you doing? 10, 12 inches away, long flowing strokes. This should be all she needs. And if it crinkles and looks nasty, that's even better. That breaks it up for me. These are drying real quick, so. good so far. I guess while we were talking about it, now that those two items are drying, I should pull those pegs off. They're just on with cotter pins. The rubber is actually the spring load for it so they'll pop up. And these are sufficient for what I want. Uh oh. Alright. Well that ain't gonna work. Hold on. Well, I gotta get two pliers. Cause that wants to rotate. Oh no, not rotate. Oh, it's an inside joke. I had a supervisor who used to say rotate. He was German. All right, and the name of the device we made was called a rotator. <laughs> Anyway, all right, we got our good old Sears Super Mega clamper on her thingy players here. Slip joint, sort of. Rotate that pin around. Oh, he's got one long piece through here. All right. 
I'll see how that went together. Oh, there's a washer on there too. Okay. I suppose I could just ding a little on there. Maybe I'll do that. Let's do the other one. See if I can stand in your way as usual. This one's just got a little piece in there. Doesn't take much to hold that pin though. Could do it with a little finishing nail, I guess. Alright, that one's awesome. Yes. Okay, so this is the way we'll do it. I'll take the rubber right off the shaft and we'll just ding, 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 ding on the end of here and then we'll file it back down. Yeah, after reviewing what I got here, I really think I need to uh, build this up because this, uh, those tubes are awful thin and I'm afraid I'll just melt it away and then it'll be ruined. This is thick metal. We'll see what we can do with it. Now this is going to spark when I start. Somebody said you can take this tip right off. So wait a minute. This tip doesn't really do anything. I'm just in the way of what we're doing right now. I'm get my helmet adjusted here. That's a little better. I'm not feeding. I guess I welded my tip. Great. Okay, tip's back on. We're going to try this one more time. And I wish I could see better. I like it. Now I can just grind it down as I need to. Off to the other side. Just piled up a bead along the bottom of that notch for the peg. Burn this off. Leave that uh, run a little bit to cool down. Let me get the angle grinder out here. And we'll see what we got. Uh, should have my hair. I a few sparks in my hair. That feels great. The hair I got left, that is. but I'm not seeing that much. So let me get the angle grinder out and we'll touch them up to make them fit. So here we go. Let's, everything's cooled down a little bit. I put a brand new wheel in the grinder. I test fitted it. It doesn't even come close yet.
put the pin in. Yeah, Come around yet. Put her in straight like this. Right, so we gotta do a little finesse. A little finessing. Vanessa? No, Vanessa. Where'd my pin go? Oh, I dropped it right there. He is. Okay. Pin, washer, rubber, we're all right here. Come on, baby. You gotta be getting close now. Now, see, she's up just a little bit. And just a little bit more touch on the outside corners, it looks like. Leave a little more of meat in the center here. So I'm trying to leave a little uh, hump in the corner too. Hump what hump? Boy, just a bit. Just a bit. Now she's sitting in the center again. I'm just going to keep tweaking on this until we get her right. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm not going to let you watch. All right, this guy's just about perfect. I got to touch it just a, one more time. Got the left hand side here done. hair above level just like the other one all right so those are fixed just simple stuff you can do with your $79 welder um, I'm gonna leave these pegs off until I get her painted up something gruesome here fun I'm gonna switch ends I don't mind that these are round I see guys put metal ones on that are really aggressive and have big teeth on them and stuff, but I don't think I need that. I'm not doing jumps or anything. I'm going to set these aside on my little cart of goodies over here. Pardon me. And we will finally get to this paint job. Not to procrastinate here. Washers are rusty enough they're camouflaged all by themselves. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see how this thing goes up the trails. I got some pretty steep trails I gotta climb where I hunt. So uh well my next thing is is I'm just gonna wipe everything down. I'm gonna throw a rag over that front tire, I'm gonna mask off the forks, and then we'll try some paint. So I'll let you see that part. Whoa!